Welcome to day 40. Read. The reading for day 40 of our daily Bible reading. Today we are reading five chapters. We are reading from Joshua chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 12, 9, 10, 11, 12, and chapter 13. Five chapters. Five. Let's continue. Um, if this is your first time seeing this video, I have been doing this. We have been doing this for the past 40 days. No. <coughs> Not for the past 40 days because I definitely missed some days and I'm recording for those days now. On Friday, I'll be done with all the days that I missed. So if you want to join us in reading all these other days, check my channel and read all them. Listen to all the videos I've uploaded and read your Bible along with it. Listen and read and let your mind be with it. For those of you who are here before, who have been here, who have been following us, our fans, <laughs> our fans, let's continue from Joshua chapter 9 today to chapter 13. Watch the other videos if you haven't so that you get a better understanding of this. Joshua chapter 9. And it came to pass when all the kings who were on this side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowland and in all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Evite, and the Jebusite heard about it, that they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they walked craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors, and they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskins, torn and mended, old and patched sanders on their feet, and old garments on themselves, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua, to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him, and to the men of Israel, you have come from a far country, now therefore make a covenant with us. Then the men of Israel said to the Avites, Perhaps you dwell among us, so how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? So they said to him, From a very far country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard of his fame, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan, to Sion, king of Eshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Therefore our elders and all, that, and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants. Now therefore make a covenant with us. This bread of us we took out for our provision from our home, from our houses, in the day we departed to come to you. But now look, it is dry and moldy, and this wine skin which we filled we are new, and see they are torn. And these our garments and our sandals have become old because of a very long journey. Then the men of Israel took some of their provision, but did not ask counsel of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them. Joshua made peace with them. Because because they came with him. They came at him with something that they know is important to him, the Lord. Let me read that part again. So they said to him, from a very far country, from a very far country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God. Chapter 9. Because of the name of the Lord your God. That is what they used to get Joshua. <laughs> they know that he cares about the Lord. That's why they used the Lord your God as an excuse. Continuation. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them. Chapter 15 and um, verse 15 now. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the rulers of the congregation saw to them. And it happened at the end of three days, after they had made a covenant with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt with who dwelt near them. Then the children of Israel joined and came to their cities on the oh, on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Chephira, Chepir, Biloth, and Kijat Jerim, 
But the children of Israel did not attack them, because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation complained against the rulers. Then all the rulers said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swore to them. And the rulers said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers for all the congregation, as the rulers had promised them. Then Joshua called for them and spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you? When you dwell near us, now therefore you are cursed, and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. So they answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, therefore we were very much afraid for our lives before, because of you, and have done this thing. And now here we are in your hands. Do with us as it seems good and right to do to us. So he did to them and delivered, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, so that they did not kill them. And that day Joshua made them woodcutters and water carriers for the congregation and the altar of the Lord, in the place which he would choose, even to this day. Chapter 10 <clears throat> Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, Heard that heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and its kings. So he had done to Ai and its king, and all the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all its men were mighty. Therefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Oam, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jamoth. Japhia, Japhia, king of La Lachish, and Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me that you may attack Gibeon. For it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. I think I'm going to open this window. Come up to help me, come up to me and help me that you may attack Gibeon. For it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmoth, the king of Lach Lachish, and the king of Eglon gathered together and went up, they and all their armies, and camped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal, saying, Do not forsake your servants, come up to us quickly, save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people. Of war with him and all the mighty men of valor and the lord said to joshua do not fear them for i have delivered them into your hand not a man of them shall stand before you joshua therefore came upon them suddenly having marched all night from gilgal so the lord rooted them before israel killed them with a great slaughter at gibeon chased them along the road that goes to beth oron and struck them down as far as azekah on makeda and it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Oron, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. There were, there were more, there were more who died from the hailstones than the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, "Sun, stand still over Gibeon." And moon in the valley of Aijalan. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and did not hasten, and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there has been no day like that, before it or after it. Does the Lord heeded the voice of a man? For the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned, and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilga. But these five kings had fled and hidden themselves in a cave at Makeda, and it was and it was told Joshua saying, The five kings have been found hidden in the cave at Makeda. So Joshua said, Roll large stones against the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to guard them, and do not stay there yourselves, but pursue your enemies and attack their rear guard. Do not allow them to enter their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. 
Then it happened while Joshua and the children of Israel made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter till they had finished that those who escaped enter fortified cities and all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. No one moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings to me from the cave. And they did so and brought out those five kings to him from the cave. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. So it was when they brought out this king, those kings to Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war who went with who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Then Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward Joshua struck them and killed them and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging on the trees until evening. So it was at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down from the trees, cast them into the cave where they had been hidden, and, and laid large stones against the cave's mouth, which remain until this day, until this very day. On that day Joshua took Makeda and struck it and its king with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed them, all the people who were in it, he let none remain. He also did to the king of Makeda as they had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him to Libna, and they fought against Libna, and the Lord also delivered it and its king into the hand of Israel. He struck it and all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword. He let none remain in it, but did to it, but did to his king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him to Lachish, and they encamped against it and fought against it. And the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel, who took it on the second day, and struck it and all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Oram, king of Gezer, came up to help Lachish, and Joshua struck him and his people until he left him none remaining. From Lachish, Joshua passed to Eglon and all Israel with him, and they encamped against it and fought against it. They took it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword. All the people who were in it, he utterly destroyed that day, according to all that he had done to Lachish. So Joshua went up from Eglon and all Israel with him to Hebron, and they fought against it. And they took it and struck it with the edge of the sword. Its king, all its cities, and all the people who were in it, he left none remaining, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but utterly destroyed it and all the people who were in it. Then Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to Debre, and they found, and they fought against it, and they took it and its king, and all its cities. They struck them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the people who were in it. He left none remaining, as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debre and its king, as he had done also to Libna and its king. So Joshua conquered all the land, the mountain country, and the south, and the lowland and the wilderness slopes, and all their kings left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breed. As the Lord God of Israel had commanded, and Joshua conquered them from Kadesh Barna as far as Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even as far as Gibeon, all these kings and their land Joshua took at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned, and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Chapter 11. We're going to chapter 13. Whoa. It's a very long chapter. Is it? Okay. Chapter 11. And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Azor, heard these things that he sent to Jubab, king of Madon, to the king of Shimon, to the king of Ak Akshaf, to the king of Akshaf, and to the kings who were from the north in the mountains, in the plains south of Chinerot, in the lowland, and in the height of Dor on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and in the west, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites in the mountains, and the El and the Elvites below Armon in the land of Mizpah. So they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude, with very many horses and chariots. And when all these kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. Hmm. But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them. For tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall armstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. 
So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the waters of Merom, and they attacked them, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, to the brook Misrephot, and to the valley of Mizpah eastward. They attacked them until they left none of them remaining. So Joshua did to them as the Lord had told him, He armstrong their horses and burned their chariots with fire. Joshua turned back at that time and took Azor and struck its king with the sword. For Azor was formerly the head of all those kingdoms, and they struck all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There were none left breathing. Then he burned Azor with, with fire. To all the cities of those kings and all their kings, Joshua took and struck with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. But as for the cities that stood on their mounts, Israel burned none of them, except Azor only, which Joshua burned. And all the, the spoil of these cities and the livestock, the children of Israel took as booty for themselves. But they struck every man with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, and they left none breathing. As the Lord had commanded Moses, his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua, and so Joshua did. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Thus Joshua took all this land, the mountain country, all the south, all the land of Goshen, the lowland, and the Jordan plain, the mountain of Israel and its lowlands, from Mount Alak and the ascent to Seir, even as far as Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, below Mount Enon. He captured all their kings and struck them down and killed them. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, except the Arabites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all the others they took in battle, for it was of the Lord to add in their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might utterly destroy them, and that they might receive no mercy, but that he might destroy them as the Lord had commanded Moses. And at that time, Joshua came and cut off the Anakim from the mountain, from Hebron, from Debre, from Anak, from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. None of the Anakim were left in the land of the children of Israel. They remained only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord had said to Moses. And Joshua gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. Then the land rested from war. Chapter 12. These are the kings of the land whom the children of Israel defeated, and, the, and which land they possessed on the other side of the Jordan, toward the rising of the sun, from the river Arnon to Mount Enon, and to the, and all the eastern Jordan plain. One king was Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Eshbon and ruled half of Gilead from Aror, which is on the back of the river Anon, from the middle of that river, even as far as the river Jabbok, which is the border of the Ammonites, and the eastern Jordan, and, and the eastern Jordan plain from the Sea of Chinarot, as far as the Sea of the Araba, the Salt Sea. The road to Beth Jeshimoth, and southward below the slopes of Pisgah, the other king was Og, king of Bashan, and his territory, who was of the remnant of the giants, who dwelt at Ashtarot and at Edre, and reigned over Mount Enon, over Salka, over all Bashan, as far as the border of the Geshurite and the Marchanite, and the Marchatite, and over half of Gilead to the border of Sion, king of Eshbon. This Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel had conquered, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, had given it as a possession to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and of the tribe of Manasseh, and these are the kings of the country which Joshua, which Joshua and the children of Israel conquered on this side of the Jordan, on the west from Baal Gad, on the, in the valley of Lebanon, as far as Mount Alak, and the ascent to Seir, which Joshua gave to the tribe of Israel as a possession according to their divisions, in the, man, in the mountain country, in the lowlands, in the Jordan plain, in the slopes, in the wilderness, and in the south, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites. The Arabites and the Jebusites, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, which is beside Bethel, one, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one, the king of Jerusalem, one, the king of Hebron, one, the king of Jamot, one, the king of Lachish, one, the king of Eglon, one, the king of Gezer, 
one. The king of Debir, one. The king of Kedar, one. The king of Omar, one. Now this is like a song. The, the king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adlam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tukwa, one. The king of Ever, one. The king of Afek, one. The king of Lasharan, one. The king of Madon, one. The king of Azor, one. The king of Shimron Meron, one. The king of Akshaf, one. The king of Tanak. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Kedesh, one. The king of Jotnam in Camel, one. The king of Dor in the Heights of Dor, one. The king of the people of Gilga, one. The king of Tirza, one. All the kings, that's one. So I read that's one, 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 one. So that's it. Now Joshua was old. Ooh, all right. <laughs> now Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, You are old, advanced in years, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. This is the land that yet remains. All the territory of the Philistines and all and all that of the Geshurite from Seir, which is east of Egypt, as far as the border of Ekron, northward, which is counted as Canaanites. The five lords of the Philistines, the Gazite, the Ashdodites, the Ashkelonites, the Gatites, the Ekronites, also the Arbites, from the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Mera, that belongs to the Sidon, that belongs to the Sidonians, as far as Avek, to the border of the Amorites, the land of the Gebalites, and all Lebanon, toward the sunrise, from Baal from Baal below Mount Ernon, as far as the entrance to Amat. All the Amat, Amat, all the inhabitants of the mountains from Lebanon as far as the brook, Misrephot, and all the Sidonians, them I will drive out from before the children of Israel. Only divide it by lot to Israel as an inheritance, as I have commanded you. Now, therefore, divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh, with the, old, with the other half tribe, the Rebanites and the Gadites, received, received their inheritance, which Moses had given them beyond the Jordan eastward. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had given them from Aroa, which is on the bank of the river Anon, and on the town which and on the town that is in the midst of the ravine, and all the plain of Medeba as far as Dibon, and all the cities of Sion, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Eshbon, as far as the border of the children of Ammon, Gilead as the border of the Gilead and the border of the Geshurites. Well, this is getting long. And Marcha and Marcha tight, all Mount Enon and all Bashan as far as Salka, all the kingdom of Og in Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth and Edre, who remained of the remnants of the giants. For Moses had defeated and cast out this. Nevertheless, the children of Israel did not drive out the Geshurites nor the, or the Machatites, but the Geshurites and the Machatites dwelt among the Israelites until this day. Only to the tribe of Levi he had given no inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance, as he said to them. And Moses had given to the and Moses had given to the tribe of the children of Reuben an inheritance according to their families. Their territory from their territory was from Arua, which is on the bank of the river Anon, and the city that is in the midst of the ravine, and all the plain by Medeba, Eshbon, and all its city that are in the plain. Dibon, Bamot Baal, Bet Baal. Beth Baal Mion, Jaza, Kedemot, Mevat, Kijatan, Sibma, Zeret Shar on the mountain of the valley. Beth Poor, please take a bite. I, <laughs> I can't guarantee that I'm getting all this swell is right. So just take a bite. Read it the way you want to read it. Mm, let's continue. The slopes of Pisgah and Beth Jeshimot. All the cities of the plain and all the kingdom of Sion, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Eshbon, whom Moses had struck with the princes of Midian, Evi, Rechem, Zor, Or, and Reba, who were princes of Sion, dwelling in the country. The children of Israel also killed with the sword Balaam, the son of Bor, the soothsayer, among those who were killed by them. Ooh. And the border of the children of Reuben was the bank of the Jordan. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben, according to their families, the cities, and, the, and their villages. Moses also had given an inheritance to the tribe of Gad, to the children of Gad, according to their families. Their territory was Jazar, 
and all the cities of Gilead and half the land of the Ammonites as far as Aroah, which is before Rabbah, and from Eshbon to Ramat, Mizbah, and Bethonim, and from Mahanim, and from Mahanim to the border of Debre, and in the valley Beth Aram, Beth Nimrah, Sokot, and Zab and Savon. The rest of the kingdom of Sion, king of Eshbon, is the Jordan at, as its borders, as far as the edge of the sea of Chinneret on the other side of the Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of God according to their families, the cities, and their villages. Moses also had given an inheritance to have the tribe of Manasseh. It was for the tribe of the children of Manasseh according to their families. The territory was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the king of Og, king of Bashan. All the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jar, which are in Bashan, six, sixty cities, half of Gilead and Ashtaroth and Edre, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were for the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, for half of the children of Machir, half of the children of Machir. I read something as Machir now. I turn it to Machir. Read the correct pronunciation of your Bible. <laughs> I can't guarantee that I'm really just the right according to their families. These are the areas which Moses had distributed as an inheritance in the plains of Moab on the other side of the Jordan by Jericho eastward. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance. That's the biggest. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance. And there's no end to the Lord. The Lord is bigger than any other thing. The, the Lord is bigger than everything. And he is the inheritance of the Levites. They have the biggest gift. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he had said to them. The end of the 40th reading. When am I going to read today's reading? I don't know. But I calculated, <laughs> I calculated everything, and on Friday, I'll be done with everything that I missed. If I don't miss anything during the week, I'll be done with everything that I missed. I'll record another video right after this one, which I'll post on YouTube right now. I'm going to post this. God help me. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next, in the next video, which will be right after this. Bye!